welcome to this service today with the Ingleborough team of churches. It's lovely to have you with us. We have got a beautiful service uh, coming up. We have one of the great stories uh, of about Jesus walking on the water and what happens to one of his disciples, Peter, when he dares to step out of the boat. Uh, we'll hear more about that later on, uh, but first let us open in prayer. The grace and mercy of God be with you at this time. Thanks be to God. We meet in the presence of God who knows our needs, hears our cries, feels our pain and heals our wounds. Creator God, maker and helper of all, as we come before you in sorrow and praise this day, comfort us with your presence make us attentive to your voice and sustain us with the hope of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to have our first hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Sometimes it's really hard to trust even the people we love and to trust in God and have faith in them. Um, we're going to have a little illustration of that. Um, 
I used to run youth clubs and we've got one going on in Bentham and uh, we have this thing called a trust game and uh, Rosie and Evie are going to illustrate it and they have great faith in one another, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> do it again, do it again, because I was, you know, that was very tentative. <laughs> a bit further back, Rosie. Oh. Okay. You trust her? No. <laughs> We've been practicing all day on this one. <laughs> we haven't really. But um, mm -hmm. today's story and our story over the last few months is about stepping out in faith sometimes against all the odds. Um, so we're just going to have a prayer now um, to reflect on uh, our trust and faith in God. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, forgive us when we fail to step out of the boat, uh, to trust in you and trust in those around us. Give us, give us faith again and renew us uh, in our courage. Amen. Jesus told his disciples to go on ahead of him. Then Jesus walked up a mountainside to pray. Storm clouds filled the sky. Jesus could see that the disciples in the boat, they were having trouble. The wind whooshed, the waves slushed, the boat tossed about. Suddenly, the disciples saw someone walking on the water to Towards them, they thought it was a ghost. Jesus called out to the men, It is I, do not be afraid. The disciples still weren't sure. Peter said, If you really are Jesus, let me walk out to you. Jesus replied, Come. Peter stepped out of the boat. He began walking on the water towards Jesus. Then people lo Peter looked at the wind and the waves. He became afraid. Suddenly, he started to sink. Lord, save me, Peter cried out. Jesus reached up, out and pulled Peter up. Why didn't you trust me, Jesus asked Peter. They climbed into the boat and the storm stopped. The disciples worshipped Jesus. They said, truly, you are the Son of God. On the wall in my study is a picture of my two eldest daughters as young children playing a game called Row, Row, Row Your Boat. They're now in their 40s, but at that point they will pretend to row and sing. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. And here we are besides the raging waters of Burton in Lonsdale, the raging waters of the River Greta. Now, we're talking today about the disciples facing some real problems at sea. Whether the disciples were of the same opinion in our story as my daughters were so many years ago is very de de debatable. Perhaps they too were in a bit of a dream, but Jesus had just fed the 5,000. If they were in a bit of a dream, it's unlikely they stayed like that. Another verse, a rewritten verse of the traditional rhyme, might be more opposite, and it goes like this. Rock, rock, rock your boat, fiercely to and fro. This way, that way, this way, that way, and into the sea we go. Well, I had an experience when I was a young man that was on those lines. When I was in the sixth form at, at school in Leeds, a few friends and I went on a trip to the Lake District and we went for a row on Derwent Water. When we set off, it was calm. We stopped at an island for a picnic and then set off again. But by then, a fierce wind had blown up. In the story from Matthew, we don't know if the disciples stopped for food but they had picked up 12 basketfuls of pieces from the feeding of the 5,000. Perhaps they ate them or fed them to the ducks, if there are any ducks on Lake Galilee. But they then too were hit by this fierce wind which blew off the surrounding hills. 
On Derwent Water, we were in real danger. I was rowing, but we swapped over. Paul, a beefy rugby player, really put his back into it to move us against the wind. For we were, as I said, in real danger. Real danger of having to pay for another session if we were late. And to four Yorkshiremen, this was a fate to be avoided. Now, the disciples in our story had much more to lose than having to pay for an extra period on the boat. They had set out in the early evening, but now it was the middle of the night and they did not seem to be getting anywhere. They knew the lake, but they were making no progress. But Jesus wasn't with them. And sometimes we can be like that, like those disciples in the boat. Following real spiritual highs, we can sometimes have spiritual lows where we need to trust in Jesus. We might feel he's not with us, but he's never far away. What is more, they were going where Jesus had sent them. And then Jesus, Jesus appears, walking on the water. Now that is significant in several ways and I'll explain those later. But now let's concentrate for a while on Peter and his take on this story. And this is how Bob Hartman put it. Peter and his friends went sailing one night, sailing one night, sailing one night, Ooh. when they thought they spotted a ghost, a ghost, when they thought they spotted a ghost. Boom. This ghost looks like Jesus, said Peter to his friends. That ghost looks like Jesus, said Peter to his friends. That ghost really looks like Jesus, said Peter to his friends. And all of his friends were relieved. Ooh. All of his friends were relieved. Yes, all of his friends were relieved. But if it's Jesus, said Peter, then he's walking on the water. If it's Jesus, said Peter, he's walking on water. But if it's Jesus, said Peter, he really is walking on water without the aid of a canoe. Without the aid of a canoe. Without the aid of a canoe. If you're really Jesus, said Peter to the ghost man, if you're really Jesus, said Peter to the ghostman. If you really are Jesus, said Peter to the ghostman, then let me come walk with you. Let me come walk with you. Let me come walk with you. Step out of that boat, said Jesus to Peter. Step out of that boat, said Jesus to Peter. Step out of that boat, said Jesus to Peter. There's room out here for two. There's room out here for two. There's room out here. So Peter stepped out and walked with Jesus. So Peter walked with Jesus. So Peter stepped out and walked with Jesus. With nothing but sea under his shoe. With nothing but sea under his shoe. With nothing but sea under his shoe. Then Peter got scared and stopped trusting Jesus. Then Peter got scared and stopped trusting Jesus. Then Peter got scared and stopped trusting Jesus. And he started to sink. Oh, poo. He started to sink. Oh, poo. He started to sink. Oh, poo. So Jesus helped Peter back into the boat. So Jesus helped Peter back into the boat. So good old Jesus helped Peter back into the boat. And all of his friends cheered. Woohoo! All of his friends cheered. Woohoo! All of his friends cheered. Woohoo! You're somebody special, they said to Jesus. You're somebody special, they said to Jesus. You're somebody special, they said to Jesus. The Son of God, it's true. The Son of God, it's true. Yes, the Son of God, it's true. Well, tremendous words. Bob Hartman puts them far better than I can. But let's think about Peter for a minute. I have no experience of walking on water. We never thought of walking across Durban water back in that day. The Christian author, Jeff Lucas, wrote a book called If You Want to Walk on Water, Consider Staying in the Boat. Paul had been shipwrecked. He didn't walk on the water and he didn't walk out of it. So walking water is rather rare. However, if you get time, you search a gentleman called Mel Tari, who wrote a book called Like a Mighty Wind. He was on mission in Indonesia, 
and he walked across a raging river. Peter, in our story, is criticized for lack of faith, and the usual interpretation of the light one is, he took his eyes off Jesus and looked at the seas, experienced the winds afresh, started to sink because his fear overcame his faith. We're all surrounded by problems, circumstances and fears. But when that occurs, remember the hymn. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. However, there is another thought possible here. Peter got out of the boat, and for a while he walked on the water. How far, we do not know. Some scholars who look deeply into the text to suggest, to try that again, to suggest it might only have been a step or two. But it was a step or two. Then he looks around and he calls on his master. Master, save me. And Jesus is there at once. We might feel that we are sinking as we try to follow Jesus. But he is there. He will uphold us. We can call on him. Master, save us. And he is there right away. And Jesus, according to the version we have here, says to Peter, you of little faith. But we don't know how he said this. What was his tone? I find it hard to believe that he was harsh and condemnatory. You have little faith. No. More likely, he said with a smile, you have little faith. Was Peter really told off? I think Jesus put it very mildly, for he had got out of the boat. So Jesus now gets into the boat, and there is calm, and they're safe with Jesus. And there's a theme in the Bible of the waters and the seas being subject to God. Peoples, nations, and all of nature are all subject to Jesus. In the John version of the story, as soon as Jesus is in the boat, they arrive. Even the winds and the seas obey him, for Jesus is Lord. In Job chapter 9, it states, God alone stretches out the heavens and treads the waters and waves of the sea. Jesus says, as he walks across the waters, it is I. Or in another version, I am is here. Clearly, this was a picture of his divinity. So we are called to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, our ears open for his encouragement. The I am is with us in all the dangers of life, all the problems of life we face, even on Derwent water. Amen.
So just let it rise, take a worship rise before him. In the grief and in the gratitude, in the praise and in the pain, the psalmist calls us our, our souls to be still. In the midst of the chaos, in the midst of the, the questions, in the midst of the, the waiting, it's not just a stillness that only comes in silence it's a stillness that is found even in the the deepest darkest places that we're called to be still and know that he is God so why don't you just bring your worship before him tonight Let us pray. We pray for the family of the church, for loving relationships, and for the life of all the different families around us. Jesus, Lord of love, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, born in poverty and soon a refugee, be with families today who are poor and live in hunger and want. We especially pray for lives torn apart in Beirut and those facing hunger in Sudan and all countries facing chaos and crisis with the COVID-19 pandemic, especially those we know in South Africa and elsewhere. Jesus, Lord of love, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, as you grew in wisdom and in favour with God and the family of a carpenter, bring wisdom and presence of God into the work and harmony of our nation today. We especially pray for the needs of our farming community and the pressure from the number of visitors to our area and we pray for those who visit that they may find rest and peace. Jesus Lord of love 
in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, as you calmed the storm and saved Peter in his doubt, bring healing to those who face worry, illness or crises. Jesus, Lord of love, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, when you were dying, you called Mary and John to care for one another. Help us support today those whose families have lost loved ones, the bereaved or the childless, orphans and widows. Jesus, Lord of love, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, as you went to a quiet place to rest and pray, bring us to a place of stillness and wholeness in your presence, knowing we are welcomed by you. Jesus, Lord of love, in your mercy, hear us. Accept our prayers and be with us always. Amen.
as you can see it's a beautiful summer's day isn't it today and i hope you've had the opportunity uh, to enjoy uh, a lovely uh, few days in the sunshine the next few days promises to be um, quite stormy and that just reflects life doesn't it the storms of life uh, are guaranteed aren't they and uh, our relationship with god is the question that we all have to ask you and me um, in our own lives so my prayers are as always for you this week um, to uh, for you to be able to hold on to god and have trust in him and to be able to when you have the storms of life to have that steadying presence of christ in your life so the blessing go forth into the world in peace be of good courage hold fast that which is good render to no one evil for evil strengthen the faint-hearted support the weak help the afflicted honor everyone love and serve the lord rejoicing in the power of the holy spirit and the blessing of god almighty the father the son and the holy spirit be with you and all those you love and care for this week amen go in the peace of christ thanks be to god